This tutorial covers the Piper Auto Control 3B found in the Piper Aero by Just Flight. There are two components to this autopilot, the autopilot console and the radio coupler. If you turn the autopilot switch to on, the only control you'll have is left right on the roll knob. The roll knob will let you select 10, 20, or 30 degrees of bank to the left or to the right. To have the aircraft stop on a heading you have to select heading on on the console and heading on the autopilot coupler. But roll would just be used if you want to have the airplane turn at a particular bank angle. But the autopilot can be used without using the roll knob. You can select heading just by moving the heading bug, having the heading on rocker switch in the on position and heading selected on the coupler. And you'll notice the airplane turned through the selected heading it's now turning back to the right it will hunt a little bit trying to get the heading but it eventually will get it and I have used these autopilots in real life in arrows that I've flown they work okay they're not the most sophisticated autopilots in the world but on a long cross country they do help by holding heading or a course which I'll show you towards the end of the video but one other thing to help just flight has added an altitude hold feature to use the altitude hold, get to the selected altitude, level off, and then press the Piper logo here. That's about all there is for heading. Next, let's move on to tuning a VOR and flying to a VOR and following a course. The autopilot coupler has two positions that we'll use for flying a VOR course. And those positions are Omni and Nav. So the manual in front of me for this autopilot says to use nav when a VOR is far away or has a weak signal. All it does is reduces the sensitivity of the autopilot for a weak signal. But it also says nav should be selected when the course is centered. But technically you could leave the selector in Omni. And either of these selections will intercept the course for you if you have full scale deflection it will turn and intercept at a 45 degree angle. But as the needle comes off of 100% deflection, the airplane will turn towards the course and reduce the intercept angle as the needle starts to center. And when I was filming this, there was a very strong wind off the right side. The winds were out of the west. So that's why right now the airplane is not turning and flying parallel to the course. The wind's off the right side so right now it's crabbing into that wind to maintain the VOR course. And as the manual states, when the course is centered, select the nav position right there. So to review real quick, if you just turn the autopilot on, the only thing that will work is the roll mode. To get anything to work on the coupler, the heading on rocker switch must be on. And there's another white button up here that looks like it belongs with the autopilot. It does not. That's the electric pitch trim on off switch. For an ILS approach, be sure to set in the localizer frequency and also spend the final approach course. Normally when doing an ILS approach, you would use heading hold. And then when the course starts to come in, you could intercept it manually with the heading bug or go to loc norm. However, when I filmed this, loc norm did not work. You'll see in just a second here, right there, loc norm is selected. The needle will start to center and it won't capture. It'll just fly right through the course. But we can use Omni or Nav. That will also intercept the course just like loc norm would do. So you can see we're now right of course. There I switch to Omni and you can see the airplane turning to the left and going over and intercepting that course and tracking it. So when doing an ILS approach, keep in mind this is a single axis autopilot. Single axis means it only does roll. It will not do pitch. So when doing an ILS approach, when the glide slope centers, select the Piper logo on the coupler and turn off altitude hold. So you might think because this autopilot doesn't do pitch, it's going to be harder to to do ILS approaches and fly the glide slope. But it's not hard and I have a trick to help you. 
So what we need to do is look at our ground speed. Right now it's about 60 knots. Half of 60 is 30. Add a zero. That's 300. Descend at 300 feet per minute. That'll keep you on that 3 degree glide slope. So to show you again what I did, say your ground speed is 100. Half of that is 50. Add a zero. That's 500. Descend at 500 feet per minute. When I was doing this ILS approach, I was only using trim to control my vertical speed. And it does look a little bit erratic outside, and that's because I have it sped up about five times to make it a little bit shorter. And the next feature, well, I wouldn't call it a feature, but the next mode on the autopilot is loc reverse or localizer back course. So when you're doing a localizer back course approach, this is the mode you'll want to select. Remember when doing a localizer back course, always set in the front course, not the final approach course. So what I'm doing here is just using the opposite side of the localizer that we were just on. The needle started to come in with localizer back course selected and it centers the needle. And this will intercept on about a 45 degree angle if you're using VATSIM and you want to do heading on a smaller angle because you've been assigned that, when the needle starts to come in, then you can select localizer back course or log reverse as it shows on the coupler. So now let's say we want to fly somewhere using a navigation source that wasn't even thought of when this autopilot was invented, the GPS. And one note, if you're using the GPS 100, if you're going totally old school, you need to make sure your nav source is in GPS. And to do that, it's a little hidden switch down here below the coupler. Otherwise, if you're using the Garmin 430 or 530, up on the CDI button, press that. Above that, you want to see GPS in green. So as I stated earlier, we're using equipment that wasn't made with GPS even in mind. The book I have in front of me with this information in it is actually dated 1979. So as far as which mode to use when using GPS, quite honestly, Omni or Nav will work just fine. What I did here, I put in Omni. Once the needle centered, I moved it back to Nav. But with GPS, you're not going to have weak signals. So when we did VORs that said for weak signals, you could put it in Nav or when it's centered. But with this, since we said there's no weak signals with GPS, you could just put it in Omni and leave it there. And you'll see here in just a second, I'll switch it to nav, and it will make no difference. So whichever one is used is up to you. And before I forget, there is one more switch associated with the autopilot. Below the coupler, we have a switch for our source between nav1 and nav2. Nav1 will use the HSI if selected. If not, it will use the nav1 source where the VOR is. Or if nav2 is selected, it will use the VOR here. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you like watching videos in Flight Simulator with a little bit of reality mixed in.